the seventh uh, for a graphical series, actually it's the penultimate one. It's going to be a reasonably short uh, lecture. We're going to have a look at the idea, the notion of tiling an image to to fill in a particular background region. So it's going to be, uh, if, if you like, a, a bit of an extension of the coverage when we had a look at, at ribbons. So the notion of uh, tiling within a game is something that's used quite commonly. Is where we have one base image and quite often, not necessarily, but quite often it's a seamless image that when we draw it next to each other will blend together. And you may have uh, one small instance of this and then we want to fill an area, vertical, horizontal area, with copies of that to completely uh, populate it, to fill it in. Uh, so quite often used to provide backgrounds or solid elements within a game. So we're going to have a look at how we can create an algorithm, a design one, and then to implement it to achieve uh, that effect. I think it's a useful thing to initially ponder yourself because it's, it's quite a good algorithm to develop. So here we're going to assume a few things. So I want you to develop an algorithm to fill a viewport with copies of a particular um, tile source image. And we can assume that we have uh, the source image or tile has a given width and a given height. In this case, TH and TW for the height and the width. And we have a viewport. The viewport will have a width and a height. And the 0, 0 uh, location of the viewport, so we're assuming, that, for example, the bottom left location, it will always commence or start somewhere within our source tile. And there we're saying the VX, VY is, is the, where the viewport starts relative to the tile, the starting location within the tile. So as, as you can see in the, the example six tiles down here, you want to create an algorithm where it might give you a viewport of a certain size, where if you have a source image of another size, you can then draw out copies of that to completely fill in the viewport. So have a ponder, uh, so 10 minutes or so should, should complete that for you. And then we'll go on now and we'll have a look at uh, an approach to do it and then how we can implement that approach. So by way of a, 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 a wordy expression as to how we would do this. So we've got our image. We know that VX, uh, VY is whereabouts the viewport starts relative to that image. So it makes sense, the first thing we should do is, is to draw out that bit of the image into our viewport. That's our starting point. So start drawing from VX, uh, VY, and draw as much of the image as we possibly can. So if we had an example down here, where VX, VY is there, not too far off the center, and then we draw this particular region uh, down in the, the bottom left-hand side. Now, when we're drawing it out, we could draw it row by row by row, or column by column by column. Um, in this case here, we are going to do it column by column by column. So if we're doing columns, then we want to step up the Y coordinate and then to repeat that process. So we're going to move along the Y axis to where the topmost bound, so the bit that we drew up to, we're going to move up there and then we're going to repeat the process of drawing it out. We're going to draw another instance of the tile here. So the X coordinate, if you like, remains the same for the starting one, but we're drawing up um, the Y ones moving up the viewport. And again, we draw it as much as we can. And we repeat that process until we have completely filled in that column within the viewport. Having done that, we've done one column. Now we can go on to the next column. So we go back down to the bottom. We're starting on a Y location down again at the bottom, but we're moving along the X axis of our viewport now as to the, or move it along to a location we finished on drawing from the previous column. And we do exactly the same set of steps here. So we are drawing up a full column. In this case, we've got our ability to draw a full column, to move across, and we just keep repeating that, uh, those two steps, until we have completely filled in the whole viewport. So in a wordy form, that's what we want to try to accomplish. If we wanted to look at an implementation of it, uh, we'll do this now. So there's a few variables that we're assuming here. We've got draw x offset and draw y offset. And you'll see that these are relative to the, the viewport. So they control the position that we are drawing to on the viewport, if you like, the on-screen 
uh, location. And initially it's zero, 0, so we're, we're assuming we're populating our viewport from the bottom left hand corner. Tile X offset and tile Y offset, they are relative to the tile, so they specify the location within the source tile that we commence our copying from, if you like, the bottom left location relative to the, the source tile, the source image. And you can see at the start we initialize those to the X and the Y location as to wherever the viewport is relative to our source image. Last year, draw width and draw height. These will be variables we will calculate that tells us how much for the current uh, instance of drawing the tile we can draw along the X and along the Y axis. So these determine how much we draw to make sure that we're populating it but we're not stepping outside of the bounds of the viewport. Now given that setup, we can then get into the actual algorithm proper. You can probably, if you think back to the description that we had when we were talking about drawing the column, moving across and drawing the column and repeating this, you can see that there's looping structures within this. In fact, there's two while loops or two main loops. So we can see it over here. So whilst the X offset is less than the width, so in other words, whilst we still have things to draw along the X axis, and a second while loop whilst we have things to draw along the Y axis. So there we'll be drawing a whole column, moving across, whole column, moving across, and repeating that until we've completely filled in the, the whole viewport based on its width and its height. This bit, draw Y offset is equal to zero and tile Y offset, because they are effectively reset for every time we draw a column, this is where we put it in. So they're between the two while loops, and this will just reset the respective tile um, uh, offset and the viewport offset. Now the bits inside the while loop, effectively what we want to do there is to calculate for the current uh, tile that we're drawing out just how much of it we can draw. And there's a couple of different uh, scenarios, you can see them down at the bottom. One scenario is that we can draw the whole source tile, it'll fit in. Another one is that the source tile might be slightly outside the viewport so we don't start and from the leftmost edge we move in a bit. And the example then on the right at the bottom is where if we were to draw out the whole source image we would go beyond the viewport, so there we want to trim it back. There is actually a fourth one possible, is where we could be outside the left hand side and outside on the right hand side, but that basically means that both of those conditions uh, would be true. So how do we do this then to cater for these different scenarios? You can see the two lines of code here. Initially we work out the draw width, this is how much we can draw and is equal to the tile width, thus you know, we're going to draw the whole tile if we can, take away any offset. So initially the offset will be start if we are offset, but then when we go around we'll be bringing it back uh, again to its zero for the subsequent columns around it. So this initial one works out just how much of the tile we can draw, either the whole tile or a region of the tile. The if statement that follows after it is the check to see are we trying to draw beyond the width of the viewport. So if the draw width is greater than the width of the viewport, so the amount we can draw, if it is greater than the amount that we need to draw, uh, take away the current offset, then we tweak our draw width so we actually truncate it back so it does fit precisely within it. So that does it for the, uh, the width. We can do something exactly the same for the height. Uh, just looking at the other axes, it was the x, it was the y. And that's the hard work done. Then we effectively draw the things out using those properties. So we're copying a region, potentially all of the source image, or if not a region of the source image, and we're drawing that to a portion or a section of our output viewport. The very final things we have to do is then the stepping process. We've got our while condition set up, we're selecting how much we can draw. We just need to have the bits that move us through the while and will get us towards our termination conditions. So again, down at the bottom we've got X's and Y's here. We're assuming the inner while loop was for drawing out the columns. So whenever we get up, we move the Y up by a draw height and we move our tile offset up by the certain amount that we drew and if need be we're iterating or swapping around to the bottom side so we can repeat the draws. And exactly the same principle for the X uh, elements of the viewport and the tile as well. And that's it, that, that's the complete algorithm uh, in all of its glory. It's reasonably straightforward. 
um, only sort of one main takeaway in this that okay, images can be tiled to cover a region of the screen quite often. We want to do that by way of a nice graphical effect. And uh, reasonably simple. Uh, the other main approach didn't really look at it here is where you have a rectangular grid and you're then sort of drawing out or populating each square within the grid with a different image. Again, that too provides another approach. Next uh, talk, this is going to be the last one in the graphics series, we'll have a look at a, a few sort of factors to keep in mind as you bring all of these different things together.